Um, so, Lana, tell me a little bit about where you were uh, when we met and what was going on with your events and all of that. So I've been doing small group masterminds for quite some time now, and I've sort of found my sweet spot, how many people I want, what I want to do with them. Um, and so I think this was my fifth or sixth uh, event. And I, we just happened to start talking about some of the details of the event and what I was going to do there and how to prepare them to give an offer for a program that would follow the event. And right away, I love the questions that you are asking, because obviously the quality of the answers depends on the quality of the questions. And it's great to have somebody who's from an outside perspective, who is not in your field, who's not drinking your Kool-Aid and doing things the way that you've done them or in your industry, show up and say, hey, what about this? And how, and how are you going to do this? And so just the questions brought up some opportunities for me. And then as I thought more and more about it, I realized that even though I have sold from stage and I am naturally good, well, I'm good at what I do. And so there wasn't that much sales that I really needed to do. Um, I just basically would provide a result and say, do you want more? Um, I realized that I was still leaving a lot on the table by not actually thinking through the way to present the offer to those particular people at that particular time and to really craft the offer tailored to them. So not do what I've done for the people last year, but to actually update it and tailor it. And again, the questions that you were asking got me thinking about some new things. I definitely added more to the program that I wouldn't have otherwise, like the oh shit call, for example, which was very popular when I, and I did have a gasp in the room when I said, oh my God, and this is what I'm offering. That's just not something that I've seen or heard anybody talk about. And it was definitely the kind of thing that my audience in particularly would respond to, and they did. And so I feel like it's things like that, that you don't know what you don't know. And so it was great to have conversations about what I don't know, and then be able to actually customize the offer and practice giving the offer, which for me was a huge thing. Like I am not a performer. I'm more of a show up and do what I feel channeled and inspired to do. Even though I prepare a ton, I'm not somebody who scripts everything they say. And that was one of my concerns. Like I'm not going to follow a script, but just because I practiced it so many times by the time I got there, I, I just naturally could flow, but now with much more preparation, much more skill and sequencing and engagement from the audience, it was just so much better than anything I've done before. Like, what were your insecurities of the event and how was I able to help you solve them? Like, what were specific tactics that yes. I worked with you on? Well, one is obviously, I think you could probably hear in my previous answer that I did not want to sell you know, there is, even though I am somebody who personally embraces the word sales and marketing, and I don't have an issue with that. Um, I did find that at certain previous events, when I would get into kind of a pitch, if you will, something that was pre-prepared, that was um, a big jump for a lot of people uh, that maybe wasn't quite as a no brainer as, you know, a, I don't know, some online course or something, something smaller. For big high ticket offers, I found that I definitely had a fear of selling. And it comes down to a lot of things, fear of rejection. For me, the rejection wasn't so much about, you know, these people rejecting me, but more like, am I misusing their trust? Um, and a big, huge part of it was actually setting up even before the event that there will be a continuation. One of the key things that you helped me see is that if I craft an incredible life-changing event, that's you know, scale of one to 10, let's give it a seven or an eight. If I can create a program where they can actually implement this and take it to the next level, then that's what's off the charts. And I think I was limiting myself thinking, well, they signed up for the event, so they just want the event. So if I'm adding this other thing, it's like I'm adding an extra and then asking like, do you want to continue versus making the event from the get-go a part of a larger context and setting it up from the beginning and getting them super excited. So by the time they had a chance to hear about the program, I've dropped so many hints. I, I had already gotten myself super excited about it, right? Like, I think that's a key thing is that I crafted a program that was such an incredible program that I couldn't wait to announce it because I knew it was the best thing that I could possibly offer these people. 
and you know, the, the, the limits around how much I should charge and all these decisions that previously would like take me out of the flow, having somebody to think through them and not, not like, like not minimize what I do. So charge enough, but also sometimes you talk to salespeople like charge $50,000. They just throw out these random numbers. I don't feel like they actually understand my audience and what I'm trying to do. And what is the window of opportunity that I'm sure you can push me on some of my upper limits. I'm totally fine with that. But I really want it to be something that I feel is reasonable for my audience, my people. And there's so many ways to slice this, right? And so that's what it came down to. We were able to slice it in a way that I felt like for the right person, identifying that right person, for the right person, it was undeniable that they were salivating and so excited. And that's exactly what happened. When I made the offer, we had this huge setback. I was doing my event in Puerto Rico. There was a series of earthquakes. We had a power outage. Um, a couple of people didn't make it because of that, which was already incredible that most people still wanted to come to the event. But when they did come, like I had less people to pitch to, and I still got the number of people that I wanted to join. So out of nine people, five people signed up for this program which was like my goal. And so it's using these setbacks as opportunities to say, okay, now I just got to do an even better job. Like what else can I do? What else can I offer so that these people are really, really clear that this is who it's for, this is what it can do, and that it makes it easy for them to really feel supported in saying yes. Awesome. Um, I think, so you touched on a lot of things in there. Talk about, I think the first thing is like a lot of people have this idea of like, I don't want to be salesy. Yeah. Do you think that I didn't push you to sell from stage, right? Did you feel like you were ever incongruent no. or no, pushy? No, you're not a pushy person. And that's why I almost feel like calling you like sales expert. I mean, that is true, but I really feel like what you did, I, I think I told you this. I, I just feel like you made it persuasive. Persuasive is different than salesy. Um, or more like undeniable for the right person. And there's a key that you don't want the wrong people. And one of the things that you talked me out of, thank God, was doing a lower payment plan and like adjusting it because the truth is those people are not going to show up the same way. And I've already experienced that. I've already seen that. But it was like this pattern of wanting to make it as easy as possible and realizing that's not the right person. Those people were not the ones that got the most out of previous programs and to have some stronger boundaries so that the right people really had a chance. It's like, if I just focused on what I was truly wanting to accomplish and finding the clarity for who I wanted to work with, then I could really serve those people at a much higher level, which is exactly what's happening now. You almost don't even have to sell because people are leaning yeah. forward so yeah. hard. Did you experience that? Yeah, I was, as you were talking, of course, my mind, it goes right to all the sex analogies, which I love to give because I feel like it's universally and relatable. You know, if you're just like waiting till the end with no foreplay to just like, bam, it's usually not gonna be that great. But if you've honestly like nurtured these people, if you've warmed them up, if you've asked them questions that are getting them thinking about the answers that you want them thinking about in order to say yes, if you have crafted an experience that really is, yeah, I, I, it's a nurturing experience. And that, that was a change in my mindset that it's not a sales experience, it's a nurturing experience. And so by the end, they were the ones asking me, do you know, I want to hear about this. Like, how can I learn more? And so it was a very different experience. It felt co-creative. It felt honoring of each participant. It certainly felt honoring of me. I didn't do anything I didn't want to do. And I wouldn't anyway. It was in integrity with the intention of the event and the experience and the participants. And it was also really beautiful because I was so clear on who was the right fit. A couple of people came up to me and said, you know, I'm wavering. And I was like, you're not the right fit. And they actually really thank me for saying, you know, thank you for seeing that and understanding. Because of course, they're having the fear of missing out. They want to jump in, but they were not the ideal person for one reason or another. 
So really, you know, having that kind of respect and integrity, I feel like that's the longevity of your brand and your work. And I was not willing to compromise on that at all. And all that working with you did was actually enhance that. It didn't diminish it in any way. And I think that was a huge fear and has been my past experience, honestly, with a lot of people who I don't feel like they understand. They understand human psychology enough to want to manipulate it. Manipulation is different than evolution. I felt like I wanted to evolve their mindset, not manipulate them into doing something. People who are thinking about working with me usually say, you know, I've, I've spoke from stage before. So what would you say to them specifically? And what would you say if you had to put a dollar amount on what I did for you? What was it worth? Well, I can put a dollar amount on that because it, the highest I've ever closed from stage was 30%. So I can put a dollar amount. It was a $10,000 program. Instead of selling three, I sold five. That's 20 extra thousand dollars that I made from this one event. And if I didn't work with you, I don't see any reason why it would have been any different than my highest, right? And so I feel like the, the, you have really nothing to lose, especially if you can think about the skills that you're learning that are going to help you for the rest of your life which for me, I'm an eternal learner. And I feel like this was training that I will go on to utilize in every future webinar I do when I'm promoting my book that's coming out that like, I, you're always doing ultimately sales, right? Um, and so to be able to do this kind of offer that is thought through and clearly stacked in the right way that makes it undeniable to the right person. I feel like those are skills that are going to be beyond just that experience. But for me, financially, like it was a no brainer. I, I think it's tricky when you don't know the person. I think that what really sold me is that I saw what you were able to offer just from the questions you were asking me. And you gave me a lot on our like free phone call where we were just able to talk through things. You gave me so much value that again, that became undeniable to me. I was like, oh, this is already worth thousands of dollars just implementing these things. And so I wanted to pay you so that I can continue learning. And once you have somebody who you trust as your partner in this, again, maybe you've done it for a long time. Maybe you have people on your team that are, you know, they're supporting you in doing this work. But to have somebody who's a consultant who's seen, I don't know, dozens, hundreds of people doing these kinds of experiences and events the human capital, the knowledge that you bring to it is going to be way deeper than me in my niche, in my field. Even if I've attended, you know, 20 events or whatever, that's different than working with 20, 30, 40, 100 people who have put this behind the scenes and seeing what works and what doesn't. I think that one thing is that you were really able to talk me out of the things that wouldn't work. Again, that's wasted energy. That probably would have been just a drain for me. And if I would have been drained, I don't think I would have been able to show up as fully. And so saving that energy and putting it in the right things, I, you know, you went above and beyond. You were actually traveling when all this is happening. This was on very short notice. You were able to show up when I needed you. And having that kind of support when the doubts come up or something goes wrong, like, people not showing up at my event as I expected, feeling like I didn't have the time to practice because I had to deal with, you know, the power outages and everything else. Like just a reminder, like here are the key things. Here's what's most important. And, and keep moving, keep moving forward. Like here's where you are, keep moving forward. Just that, not just encouragement. <laughs> That's one thing to be encouraged. It's another thing to pay somebody a bunch of money and being like, I got to do this now. You know, you, you went all in. Now you have to show up. I think that's the value is that there isn't anywhere to hide. I feel like if I didn't hire you, I might've exited out a little bit and just like, I don't have to do this right now or, or I'll just do a smaller version of it. And I, and I was really tempted. I left you a message about that. I think the day before they went, you're like, no, <laughs> what are you doing? And, and it was one of those wake up calls. And I'm so glad that I kind of, you know, it's not that I push through the resistance. It's that I realized that the resistance was coming for a reason for me to be able to work through my own blocks. And what I did the next day when I presented is I actually used that example of the resistance I had and how I worked with someone 
as an example for the people that are sitting in front of me that are wanting to experience the same thing. We're usually not going to do difficult things on our own. That's just not in human nature. So to have somebody there with you to do something that is new, slightly uncomfortable, unfamiliar, a little bit scary maybe, uh, to, to do something that you haven't done before. Um, I feel like having that support is just paramount. Yeah. Um, when the shit hit the fan, did I just talk about yeah. that experience a little yeah. bit? Yeah. No, you went be above and beyond. I really felt like you were there. You're clear with your boundaries. Here's when I'm available. Here's when I'm not because I'm traveling because this, because that. Like, of course, I understand that. But in the windows that were available, I really felt like you were so responsive. And again, it's red hot, right? I, it, I don't have, if you respond to me 48 hours after the event, that does me no good. It, 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 it was considering um, my needs and predicting also. You were like, hey, before the event, check in with me. Like you were predicting, because again, you've seen so many people go through this. You could probably spot, you know, what things could come up. So you're like, hey, if this happens, reach out. If that happens, reach out in this way. Like I felt like you were so responsive. And again, I really feel like it's, it nipped a lot of things in the butt that could have grown out of control and really derailed what I wanted to do. So just having that opportunity to address the doubts, the fears, the discomforts, or just the questions, you know, like, Hey, like this came up, uh, should I change this or something isn't working? I got to have a plan B having somebody who's been in it with you and understands what you are doing was really priceless. And I, again, I feel like the, the qualities that really describe you is a, you're brilliant and you really know what you're talking about. And I don't use that lightly because I've been around the block for a long time. I've seen a lot of people do a lot of things. You are not somebody who, um, you know, created one business, did one thing. And now you're just teaching everybody how to do that one thing. It's a cookie cutter thing. Like you understand how business works, how psychology works. You're really a great listener and you're paying attention and tailoring what you are saying to each person. But there are a lot of brilliant people who don't have integrity. So I feel like integrity is a really key piece for me and how you treated me was an integrity and it built trust. And in turn, you know, I was able to offer the same to my clients and the whole experience felt like really high integrity. And I think the third thing is just that element of support. You know, I don't know how else to say it, but you were attentive and nurturing at the right times when I needed it most. And that is, again, it's not a course that somebody just gives you a bunch of worksheets, spreadsheets. Um, you know, you were right there. You were watching the videos. You were commenting when I couldn't even have time to watch the feedback. You're like, let me summarize it for you. You made it easy for me to do what I needed to do. And that's really what I want from somebody who you know, has a high touch approach. I want somebody to actually give me what I need in the way that I can receive it at that time. Because you came to me like when that stuff was happening, you're like, should I cancel my events? What should I do? And on, at the time I was traveling and I still was able to jump on and help you out yeah. and get yeah, you to so focus, thinking, right? Yeah, well, it's thinking through like options that, most people would not have to think through. It's really thinking outside of the box, which I ended up talking to somebody who's been doing events for 10 years. And she was like, uh, I don't know, maybe you should cancel it, you know, because she's never had to face this kind of caliber of a problem. And it's like, okay, great. Thanks for your <laughs> advice. But I wanted to have options. And that's actually something you did really well. What you have done a couple of times was saying, not this is the right way. This is the wrong way. You're like, is this your goal? Yes. And my goal was to keep people safe, but also to think of options that would allow those that wanted to come to come. And so we actually talked about three different options, which I did end up offering to the people. One was to keep it as it is, which most people chose. Another one was to reschedule. And the third one was to give them a refund. And just having, again, instead of a one answer, I'm not looking for somebody to tell me what to do. I'm looking for a partner to consult with in the best ways to achieve my aims or to think about things, not, you know, like giving me their advice, but what, what might be right for me at this time with my audience. And again, it was priceless to have that kind of conversation. And on a human level, I just felt like you were able to understand that. And I guess the thing that I really want to highlight is that it's hard to separate, you know, 
and I know this because there's a hundred million law of attraction coaches and mindset coaches in my field, for example. And you can't tell if this person started learning it yesterday and is just repeating what they heard in a video or if they've done graduate level studies in it, or, you know, you, you can even look at sometimes client testimonials and you're like, are these real? Is it like what it is? But what you cannot fake is when you hear that person address a question you have in a way that you've never thought about before, right? If you feel like they were able to teach you something and they got you and they were able to take you to that next level. And I feel like that's what everybody should be looking for when they're hiring anyone, right? Are you elevating the conversation and the experience? And if you are, then why would you not hire that person? That is somebody who you will learn from. And that's what ended up happening. I learned so much more than I, what I thought I would learn from you with you. Um, and I feel like there's so much that I'm excited to like implement in even the future events and just debriefing about the event with you doing that as well. Like the learning just keeps going. And again, that's like, you know, I don't know what, what value you want to put on that, but I would say that's worth at least uh, 50% of the profit, the extra profit that you would get for working with you. And I paid you less than 50% of the extra profit, you know, like it was really, um, undeniable looking back. But when I was making the decision, it was really recognizing that the value I've already received through the conversations and through really evolving how I showed up was already so high that it's only going to get better when I actually see the financial returns from my actual event. And then looking back, I'm like, I didn't have anything to go into. I'm already hiring you for my next event. Even though I already know this stuff, I still would like the extra hand holding because you never know what's going to come up. And by that time, I think I will have evolved myself and I want to take it to the next level.